In this video, I'm going to show how you can trigger a workflow action when you click on a marker on your Mapbox map. So a common use case of this might be that when you click on a marker, you want the relevant entry in the repeating group to be highlighted. And you'll see here, if I click on a marker, that's exactly what happens. We zoom in on the marker, but we also scroll to the relevant entry in the repeating group and highlight it. Throughout this tutorial, I'm going to be using Mapbox, and more specifically, I'm going to be using the beautiful Maps Mapbox plugin. This is a Cran for Tech plugin. Now, I've already gone through in another video how to build a store locator like the one we have here. I'm going to link to that below, so I'm not really going to focus on that. I'm really going to focus today purely on how you drive those workflow actions based on marker clicks. And what you're going to want to do is once you've loaded your markers, which we're doing on page load with this add list of markers to Mapbox A map, you're going to want to first of all figure out how you can set a repeating group entry here to be highlighted when the marker is clicked. So, you know, at the moment, if I click on something, we're not getting any kind of corresponding highlighting over in our repeating group. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our page and we're just going to click on the page itself and I'm going to set a custom state. And the custom state is going to be selected location. And the type is going to be location, which is a custom data type that I've created. And then what we can say is, first of all, if we go to the group here, we can say when this group location is clicked, we're currently flying to the location on our map. But we can also set the state of an element. And the state is going to be the state that we've just created. And its value is going to be the current cell's location. And then what we can do is we can say when that custom state. So when, let's look for that page. When the page is selected location is the current cell's location we can set the background color to be equal to this. We refresh our application. And then when we click on a specific entry, we're flying to it and we're leaving it highlighted. But the next thing we want to do is when we click on another marker, we want to fly to that marker. And then we also want to highlight the relevant entry here and scroll to it. So at the moment, nothing's really happening. We're just showing the pop-up. But the plugin does have a custom event that we can use. And uh, that custom event is called when a Mapbox map marker is clicked. So every time a marker is clicked, this event is going to be triggered. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to set the state of an element. We're again going to go to our store lake locator demo, select the location state, and we're going to give it the value of do a search for location and we're going to take the first item now if we just left it here it would simply take the first entry in our database which is of course not what we want so what we want to do is use a few constraints so that bubble knows it's the marker we just clicked on that's the relevant one and what we can do is we can say we only want the location where the latitude is equal to this map box map last clicked lat so what's happening is every time we click on a marker, I'm setting an exposed state on the map box map element itself. That's going to give us this marker's latitude and longitude values. We can then access them and use that to let Bubble know which location we want to set the custom state for. So that's the latitude, and then the longitude is going to be equal to this map box map last click long. So let's try that now. Hopefully when we click on a a marker we're going to see one of the entries here become highlighted let's click on this one and you can see sure enough we're setting the custom state and the result this is becoming highlighted so we are triggering a workflow action based on the marker click that should be one further down but what we can do is a couple of other things first of all we want to fly to the location that we have just highlighted so what we're going to do is we're going to go to Element actions, fly to a location, 
and the location it's going to be the exact same as what we're doing here we're going to search for locations first item so we'll do a search for locations the first item where Uh, it's the first item long as you should say, but the search for locations where the longitude is equal to this map box maps last click long, and then we'll copy that and we'll just change it to latitude. So we'll say search for locations, it's going to be latitude is equal to. This map box maps last clicked lat and then change this here to lat. So let's refresh. And this time when we click on a marker, we're getting taken to it. We're showing the pop up and it's a bit more obvious that we're flying to the specific one. And then the last thing I'd like to do is in terms of the, the UI, I suppose, is I could probably want the entry that I have clicked on to be at the top of the repeating group list because if for example I was to click on one further down then it wouldn't be obvious to the user that that is the one that we've chosen so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in another condition here and I'm going to say scroll to entry of a repeating group the repeating group is going to be repeating group location which is this repeating group over here and the entry we're going to scroll to is do a search for location and again, we're going to do the exact same thing we did for our other two steps. We're going to put in our constraints to be equal to latitude equals this map box maps last clicked uh, lat. And the longitude equals this map box maps last click long. And then we're taking the first item. So let's do that again. Hopefully now the entry that we click on is going to show up at the top of the list here. So let's click on that and you can see it's at the top. But if we click on another one, that's the one that's brought to the top. So just a nice thing to add in from a kind of user experience point of view. So the last thing I'll say is you don't need to link this just to, you know, changes in the repeating group. You could also make changes to the thing itself. So for example, here in my database, uh, I've added in this field to my location data type called a click count. Like let's say you wanted to count the number of clicks on a specific marker. At the moment, you'll see my database, I have two that are on one. Uh, but what I could do is if I go back to my workflow, I could say, click here to add an action. I could make changes to a thing. We're gonna go do a search for location. And again, the first item. Uh, and what I actually could do is I could just copy the expression this time rather than doing it out again. So we'll clear that. And then we'll paste it and yeah just to make sure those constraints come across and we're just going to say the click count is going to be equal to this location's existing click count but we're going to add one every single time and now hopefully when i click on a marker we're going to add one more to that click count and if i just say one two three this five two five seventh avenue one should have at least three clicks now if I go back to my database and refresh that, sort from top to bottom, that's the one there. You can see that now has three clicks. So you can drive any workflow action you want really um, using these exposed states and using that custom event. So hope that's been useful. I'm going to link to the longer tutorial that describes how to build a store locator demo in full below. And if you have any questions, you can let me know.